going to try it on at all, yeah? No, you, and you'll see. Was you going to try it? If you, you got to let me answer. I would not have done that without speaking to you, and I've said that. A blatant lie. Slightest guy I've met. And I'm saying it. Slightest guy I've ever met. I would have spoken to you. Of course you was. For all that. I feel for that girl because you've been grilling her all this experiment, and you have done exactly the same. I'm good. You keep it to yourself, mate. Just you keep your distance from me. I'll keep your distance. We'll respect that. Listen, Ryan, I like Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Listen, any 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 real man will understand why he did what he did there. End of the day, a real man is not going to waste his time, okay, on a guy that he knows is phony. A guy that he knows is a hypocrite. A guy that he knows would obviously come after his girl when he wasn't there. You know, Ryan's basically saying that uh, if you and I were best friends, I wouldn't let you... I wouldn't leave you with my, with my girl alone in any situation because I don't trust you because you're that guy. Yeah, that's why he shut it down quickly. That's why he wasn't looking to hear none of that because he knew. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, though, let's get into the next one. I mean, I'll keep your distance. We'll respect that. She sat here last week saying I was a 12 out of 10. And now she's saying she would she finds Nathan as the sexiest. I mean, she could have said me. Okay, so what's Nathan? 24 out of 10. Like, what's this FIFA cards and numbers keep getting bigger? The other people are no, attractive. Does that mean I can't have any friends with penises? No, it's not that. I'm just saying security. Yeah. Would you say that it made you experience this situation in a jealous way? Potentially, yeah. A girl in this group, which is hence why I chose you. Was doubly hurt, painful for me. It was just a game. Unfair. Alright, bro. Let me break this down real quick. Let me tell you why Luke is really in his feelings, you see. Now, as a gym goer myself, I know some of the reasons why people go to the gym, but I also know some of the reasons why some people are not natural. Yeah, I said it. Luke is not natural. You ain't telling me otherwise. So, my point being is this. So, when it comes to people who are not natural, there are some people that do it because they are competing. You know, obviously, if they go on a stage, they obviously go on the juice to obviously look the part that they need to look. Now, of course, there are natural bodybuilders. I'm not saying there isn't. But, you see, on the other scale of things, there's people that also go on the juice because it's something that helps them with their own self-esteem. Okay, because they don't have all that massive confidence within the way they look. So they have to look completely chiseled. They have to look pitch perfect. So therefore, they'll also, you know, go on the juice for that reason. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, you see, his girl has basically said that she basically fancies or at least finds Nathan more attractive. Or at least that's how he is reading in his mind. So in his mind, he's thinking, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. One minute you're telling me I'm a 12, okay? Then he's looking at himself thinking, look at me. I'm jacked, okay? Look at my muscles. I look good. I am I look like a, I look like Hercules. But you're but you still have the audacity to say that Nathan is attractive? Well, in his eye, he thinks that she's saying Nathan is more attractive, which whether or not she said it or not, who who knows, who cares? But that's what he's processing right now. So he's looking at Nathan thinking, but you're half the man I am in terms of size. How the hell are you saying that you find this guy more attractive than me? And that's why he's in his feelings, okay? Because he thinks the way he looks is more than enough for a woman to only like him and only have eyes for him. That's it, point blank, period. Which is probably why he's never had a serious relationship before. Because as soon as a woman kind of looks elsewhere or whatnot, man is already going nuts due to his own self-esteem issues. But nonetheless, though, let's continue. I don't feel like he shows me that he cares about me enough. Like, I felt like I'd come like, out of my comfort zone completely and I was trying to get us to the best place we could be. And obviously made Polly realise that obviously I do care because it's hurt me, so... But it shouldn't have had to have taken I know me saying that I want qualities in someone else for you to show and tell me how you feel about me. Affection, like the little kiss and stuff. I know sometimes I forget what when cheek. I'm... Yeah, but I'm not a PDA person, you know what I mean? even when we're at home. Even when... The last thing I'm going to do now is want to give you a kiss when my head's been scrambled. But that's not fair when it's taken us so long to get to where we are. Of course, I know it's front. not fair, but... Now I feel like I'm being punished for one comment I've made after the... Comment, it was a massive comment to where everyone else couldn't believe it. You or... said, so for you to react how you did was unfair. But at the moment, I'm just seeing the potential. And it's like, is this just another fucking relationship? The really worst thing in the world is fall in love with potential. Mm. So if your objective is what you think Adam will be in the future, you might as well leave today. Had All right, boom. I mean, listen, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I really did like what um, Polly, was, Polly was wearing. Not gonna lie to you. I mean, girl was looking good. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. When are these two going to move on from this? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, they, did they did both choose to stay. And uh, Adam now has revealed that clearly he cared because... Uh, he obviously has feelings towards her. To be honest with you, I might have to disagree with him. I don't think he reacted because of the fact that he's now got feelings towards her. He reacted because he was finally starting to uh, open up after she was asking him week after week. Listen, he spent week after week, day after day right here, trying to pretty much um, get her to turn off him. 
everything he was saying, he was saying it because he was hoping that maybe she would walk away. She'd be like, listen, I, okay, okay, I, I can't do this. I'm telling you now. But in the end, he was like, you know what? After the experts and everybody else were saying this, this and that, he was like, okay, fine. I'll just be open. I'll, 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 I'll open myself up. I'll actually give this a good try. And then that week, he finally gives it a good try. She goes up and says that she would still switch. After all the moaning that she did, and after all the things that he said about her that he didn't like, and she kept pushing and pushing and pushing along with the experts, and then boom, bam, he's finally said, okay, cool. Let me do what I did want to, let me, let me do what I did not want to do. What he did not want to do was to actually pursue in a way that therefore gave her false hope. That's how he saw it. So he started doing it after everybody told him. And then she still said, because remember, for a few weeks, he kept saying that no matter what I do, nothing's ever enough because Polly kept stressing and stressing and stressing. Now, respectfully, I understood why she was stressing because she still wasn't getting what she really wants from a man, which is, which is, which is respectful. But she finally starts, starts getting it now. Maybe not as much, but it's getting there. And then boom, bam, she's like, listen, I'm going to twist. That's why he's pissed. He is pissed purely because he started, he started to put effort in. The effort that he did not want to put in the first place. So either way, though, they can pretend or he can pretend that he's still here because he's got a feeling for her. But trust me, that hasn't come yet. I don't believe it. Not just yet. That was a reaction of something different. I'm a man. Trust me. <laughs> Let's continue. An argument. I wouldn't call it an argument. No, I'd call it an okay. ambush and then I leave the room. OK. Because that's what he does. Stewed on it. Then waiting until we're in a room together. Dropped a bomb on me. Waited for me to react because I do. And then you're like, see, that's why I don't really like you. I'm pissing around and having banter and pretending cold hands. OK stuff going on with Hannah and the girls or whatever. I was kind of just like listening to it all. And all I'm hearing is she's trying it with everyone's husbands. There is probably things we can work on. Yes, I was like, every single time we have an argument, I check out like more and more and more and more, but I still wasn't finished. Like okay. I still shit. We've had this experience. Let's remember that we actually had a really good start. And I wanted to say thank you for how you made me feel on the wedding day, because I felt incredible. Okay. I would never deny the fact our wedding day was special, but no. So far as we so I kind of didn't put in the first bit there, but pretty much that was him responding to a question from the expert that hearing what Hannah had to say, does that change anything for you? And he's saying, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't really, I really don't have much to say about them in, uh, uh, this week. Well, last episode, because there wasn't too much to say there, but uh, I'm just waiting for the uh, awesome part. But we'll, we'll get there when we get there, because boy, that <laughs> I've never witnessed such dismantling in my life. But anyway, let's get into Kieran and Christina here. PMDD. Why I prepare myself for the worst in every situation, and I live in the moment for every good bit that I have. I want to give this yeah, you're not, as I can. You're just not. I've got questions. Before, I think everyone in this room's got questions about their relationship, but I'm not saying I don't want to be with you. That's not what I'm saying here. Yeah. You're going to struggle. It's going to be a struggle for life because I can't change. It takes work, and I'm prepared to work at it, Christina. And I'll work at it until there's no bones left. I'm not going to leave. All right, before we get into the before we get into uh, the dismantling of Orson, <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing and what? <laughs> Let's talk about Kieran and Christina now. Obviously, I had no idea what PMDD was; never knew it existed. So I had to look it up, okay, to really know what the, the gravity of the conversation that Kieran was having here with Christina. And I know for myself firsthand, I couldn't be with someone that's got PMDD because I have my own, not, not diagnosed issues or nothing like that, you know what I mean? But I have my, my own needs, you know what I'm saying? And I also have my own trauma of being with somebody that one minute they're all, they're all good and then boom, next minute they're switching up and you're thinking, what the hell is going on? Hey, that stuff tires you out, drains the hell out of you. And that's someone that did not have PMDD, you know what I'm saying? That's just, that was just their personality, but hey, that, it is what it is. So I know for me personally, based on a trauma type situation, I couldn't do it. So therefore, Kieran, shout out to this guy. Shout out to this guy who has got a, a big heart. He's got, I mean, I've got a big heart too. Don't get it twisted. But, um, you know, the fact that he hasn't quit on the relationship, but he's just been letting, letting it be known that it's going to be a challenge for him and it's something that he has to think about, I respect that. Now, also at the same time, it's good that Christina obviously started to open up about how obviously this is going to be challenging for her and why she lives the life the way she does. And I do feel sorry for her because if things don't work out with Kieran, you know, I can only hope that maybe in the future she can finally find someone that's going to have, um, I don't know if it's the right word or wrong word to say, but someone's going to have the, no, no, yeah, I've got the right word. Someone that's going to have the patience to be able to, you know, be there for her when she's going up and down with her emotions. Me, myself, yeah, I couldn't do it. So respect to any man that can. Now, with that being said, let's get into, I mean, from the for as long as I've watched Married at First Sight, <laughs> this has got to be one of the most 
this is going to be the most dismantling I've ever seen in my life. So let's get into it. I'm not going to leave again until we're on the same page. Orson said that he wanted to stay another week. Being very open and honest with him, I basically told him, I don't think I'm attracted to you. I don't overly fancy you. What? No, just continue. The truth, I know, I know that you don't have a great relationship with the truth, Orson, so it's OK. No, just continue. So, you know, I said, you've locked me in for another week. You've dragged me along for, for your experience when you know there's nothing there. Then I was, like, visibly, you know, upset. And, you know, Orson's making this big show of singing and enjoying himself, you know. At this point now, I'm getting worked up. And I haven't even been able to wish my girl happy birthday. You know, this moment here, you could tell Rochelle wanted to start crying. You know what I'm but she held that in. She held it in and then kept going. Yeah, that was just, she just warming up. Let's go. Moment, I knew I could not stand him. I can't stand, stand, for I can't Can stand I the sight of him. So exactly liar. You, you are a stinking liar. Man. You are a stinking liar. I'm because I was the one who told I'm you I wanted to leave. I was the one who told you that I wanted to get back for my daughter's birthday. So don't sit here and lie. I speak now. Stop, you can tell the truth. Try and tell the truth. Okay, guys, it's very clear that things have completely broken down here. Yo, imagine say, can I speak up now? And she's like, yeah, you can speak up only if you tell the truth. She's that far gone and that far just would never believe anything that comes out of your mouth that she's saying that, yeah, speak up if you could tell the truth. Oh, my goodness. I would have loved to have been a fly on a wall in their relationship. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Now, I know there's a lot of people that are not a fan of Rochelle. You know, they think that Rochelle has been too hard and awesome and she's been this, this and that. And I feel like I'm the only person that I know based on our, uh, based on us here, obviously on this channel, right? I'm the only person I think and maybe a few other people that have generally seen what Rochelle sees and understands why she is the way she is with Awesome. Because for me personally, Rochelle isn't, she doesn't give me vibes as the kind of woman that would just start going off, off, off for the sake of it. She's the kind of woman that's going to collect her information, her data, her data. And then she's going to be like, boom, this is the situation. But here's the thing, though. And this is something that I feel like people keep kind of not seeing or keeps going over their head is that Rochelle has said weeks upon weeks now that she tells him things off camera. And everything that she's basically been telling him is that, listen, I'm ready to go. I'm, I don't want to be in anymore because this is not working for me. But she kept staying because of whatever nonsense he was saying. Now, that's, of course, where that that's where her downfall is at. You know what I mean? I, I don't respect the fact that she stayed for this guy. She stayed just because he kept saying, oh, let's stay, let's stay, let's stay. She should have really left. She should have stuck to her guns and left, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, though, let's continue. There's no relationship right now. Michelle, at the retreat, Orson and Hannah have been bonding, have had talks about recoupling. He's back to himself. He's, he's finally found his queen. Also, that Orson isn't really here for the right reasons. Behind Stephen's back, Orson and Hannah were, um, you know, talking amongst themselves. I returned from the retreat, and I walked in last night and found Orson and Hannah. Holly and Alex almost like, you know, having a little double date set up. Before, before we even get into Alex's reaction, you know, to be fair, she does say almost, almost as if they were having a double date set up. She didn't say it was a double date set up. She said almost, because that's what it looked like. So for Alex to react the way he reacts next is, uh, you know, Alex exposed himself, to be honest with you. This was the first time, I actually know, probably the second time, because I remember the first time we met Alex, I was like, yeah, this guy's a bit, mm. since then he was kind of cool. Or cool, but you know, yeah. But this, but the, but the way he behaved now, yeah, I, I will. I I don't see myself respecting Alex moving forward. Period. So all that did was reinforce. <laughs> we were we were all sitting separate chairs. Chill out, chill out, chill out. 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 No, I think I think it's bullshit because them two have lips. Are you trying to defend when they've been? That's what you're talking about. Fucking snake, man. Snake, you. Me. Yeah, you. So here's the thing. First and foremost, he tries to support Olsen by basically trying to lie for him, for starters, clearly. Then obviously, you know, Lacey calls out and he's now like, like calling her a snake. I'm sorry, but Lacey doesn't have loyalties to you. You know what I mean? She's not your girl, for starters, okay? She's not your friend neither. But this is the thing that really bothered me the most. Alex starts to go for any woman that starts, starts speaking up against him. But none of their men stood up for them. If I'm Lacey, I'm looking at Nathan thinking, yo, why are you not speaking up for me? Because I promise you now, I wouldn't let no one talk to my girl. I don't listen. First and foremost, my girl wouldn't actually speak up anyway. You know what I mean? Because we would be out of listen. Let's just let's just stay out of it. You know what I mean? Unless she needed to. And I think in this situation, Lacey needed to do that hundred percent, hundred percent, because it wasn't going to be fair to to make Rochelle look as if she's talking out of her ass when she wasn't. Do you see what I'm saying? So it was necessary. But if I'm Nathan now and I'm seeing Alex saying that to my girl, I'll be looking and thinking, no, 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 don't do that. You're not you're not, you're not doing that. But let's move on, though, because he's not the only man that decided to not say anything. Today, 
actually, that. But have they not been sneakily kissing? I know you didn't be. It's a fix him. I'll tell him. Out. Don't part me. Let me rephrase that, Alex. Talking shit, man. Talking yeah, shit, man. Alex. Don't, 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 don't you say to me. Don't do that to me, Alex. I'm asking if you've got something to Alex, say. Can you just... I think, I don't think you need to turn to a shell and say you're talking fucking shit and then get to lie and say, oh, you're a fucking snipe. The circle were in the day, this happened. You don't need to attack, 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 attack. And I've sat here and I've watched you attack the women either end and it's fucked me off because I didn't like it, Alex. Well, don't take it out on me, I'm just trying to calm the peace in the room. Who is taking anything out of you? Please respect the form. Oh, my God, I'm about to... <sighs> I told Lisa that I think she's a snake, and now you've got Sasha coming at me. Just be quiet. You're telling my wife, pipe down. Not everything needs your two pence. Again, this is a situation where Percy Ross should have been like, hey, hold on a minute. What's going on here? What's going on here? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a bit of a sticky one. Did Lacey have to speak up? A part of me says no, but a part of me says yes. Because what she addressed was needed to be addressed. Okay, because the way Alex is moving, the way he's behaving is unacceptable. So I can understand her frustrations 1000%. So I, I support what she said, but I don't know if she had to chime in. But because she chimed in and she chimed in with information that was very crucial, Ross should have then been like, listen, don't talk to my girl. Okay, if you've got any issues, you speak to me. And if I agree with you, then I'll speak to my girl. Simple as that. with a man who treats my friends like that because if he's going to treat my friends like that he can happily treat me like that i'm sorry but uh i i, I was waiting for this little bit here <laughs> it's funny though because holly this is how you this is how you was treating hannah and a few other people so like ah listen hannah just understand your man is basically who you are okay so you need to pop yourself down there <laughs> don't get me wrong though she's she, what she said is truthful but don't pretend as if that's not how you you have behaved too come on now you have been getting yourself involved in other people's business all the time and uh the way you've conducted yourself with, with, with hannah and you know whatever hasn't been nice so come on relax yourself mm -hmm. <clears throat> like a retreat me and hannah sat and were speaking i wish we had a kiss but done i know what she was in was done like so honestly i didn't feel like i was walking on anybody's toes or like disrespecting anyone no, that's done it, mate. <laughs> come on. Love it. did you expect that to have on rochelle if I'm being totally honest, Mel, and this might come across as sound wrongly, I didn't really care about Michelle in that moment. I said I didn't like you, I didn't fancy you, and, and I didn't see a future with us. I mean, at that point, I thought you would have gathered up your dignity and wanted to leave anyway. I was trying to honour my word, but what, where was your self-respect and your dignity? Like, were you, were you that desperate to stay in the process? Mission to stay in the process by any means necessary. He saw an opportunity with Hannah to recouple and stay in the process. He jumped at it. Harassment to yourself at this point. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like Hannah, bless her, went round all the different guys trying to latch on no, to somebody no, yes, to stay in the process. Austin is the only one who's stuck. You know, no self-respect. It's just, I find it embarrassing. I, 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 you know, it's... OK, well, look, it is very clear that this relationship is done. I think to most people that you're a bit simple. He definitely lacks any shred of integrity. I mean, listen, I will say this, though. As much as I enjoyed watching <laughs> watching this episode to see the way she dismantled him, it wasn't needed, though. It wasn't needed. I mean, listen, Rochelle could have done better than that, you know. I mean, obviously, if she's got any uh, dignity for herself or whatever, you know, really and truly, she did have to destroy him. But you can tell that she had got to a point where she was triggered. You can tell she got to a point where she was just absolutely fuming and she's had enough. I mean, to be fair with you, she's probably, she was probably still holding a grudge from the fact that she didn't get a chance to go see her daughter on her daughter's birthday because of the choice that she made based on Austin Austin to stay. Which again, like I said before, based on the choice that she made to stay because of Austin. So she could have still gone home regardless of what Austin said, to be honest with you. But uh, she, you know, picked that over that. So she needs to take accountability for the fact that, you know, the choice that she made to stay wasn't just down to Austin's request. It was also down to her saying yes. You know, but clearly she was holding that grudge. So therefore, she's definitely gone into him way too much uh and really didn't need to do that you know she could have just said listen i regret staying uh yeah she could have just sat there and said listen i regret staying because really into i should have gone home when i said i was gonna go home you know obviously i went home the first time anyway i came back i thought i'd stay this time to obviously make a, an actual effort but i know i wasn't into this man so really into it i should have just gone home but instead of going home i stuck around and because i stuck around i've now had to pretty much endure so much more of a headache for being around this man you know so she really needs to take that accountability though that she made a choice to stay. She can't put all of it, all of it on Orson. That, that's not fair. Not at all. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve it like that. Nah, 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 nah. 
entertaining to watch, but he does not deserve it like that. Okay, so yeah. But nonetheless, though, like I said, for Alex moving forward, this guy, clown. Uh, obviously, from t- the preview for tonight's episode, was looking interesting because Holly says that she's 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 out, she's leaving like today, like so. I'm 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 gonna see how that how that how that pans out. But uh, yeah, now Alex needs to uh, gain respect for how he speaks to people because the way he's conducting himself is nothing but utterly embarrassing and ugly. Okay, and it's crazy because how, Hannah's defense at one point was. I speak to guys the same way I would speak to girls. And that's something that has got her in trouble, right? That's what she said. Meanwhile, Alex is speaking to the girls the way he would be speaking to the guys. Like, what the hell? I don't know what kind of intimidation madness he's got going around. It's like he's got everybody scared of him. Like, all the guys are scared of him because none of them stood up, which is unacceptable. Bro, I don't give a damn how tall you are, how big you are, how jacked you are, how much of a boxing experience you've got. Like, if you're going to speak to my girl like that, you must be mad. I'm definitely going to say something to you. And if you want to fight about it, listen, it is what it is. If you beat me up, it is what it is. The main, the main thing is I walk away knowing that I stood on business. And the business that I stood on was the fact that I wasn't going to tolerate nobody speaking to my girl like that. And I promise you this now, after the potential fight, whatever, I know he'd walk away respecting the fact that I stood up for my girl. He'd have no choice to walk away with respect that to my girl. And trust me, even though I would have taken potential the beating, he won't be t- talking to my girl like that ever again because he knows that I'll speak up again. Trust me, I know how 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 guys work. You know what I mean? Alex is just doing this because everybody else ain't saying nothing. Come on, guys. There's one of him and how many of you? <laughs> and Ross is a big dude though. Like, but oh yeah, I didn't put it in here. But Ross and Sasha have a little situation going on after this where. Uh, what's his name? Uh, my Ali goes up to Rosh saying, "Why did he speak to you?" And R- Sasha's like, "Why? Why?" And she's so Sasha right now does not feel protected by her man, and respectfully, she's right to not feel protected by her man. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, I'm out. See you guys for tomorrow for tomorrow for tonight's episode. Yeah, peace.